Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Proverbs 31 Ministries morning show. My name is Nicole Moses, and I am joined today by my friend and co-worker, Maddie Vincent. Hi, everyone. We are so glad that you are joining us today. If you see me look down, it is just because I'm looking at your comments. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Um, let's see. Sheila, we're so glad that you're here. This is our monthly morning show. It happens on the third Thursday every month. And you know what, Nicole, at this point, we are just family. There are so many people that tune in every month that we are just so delighted to see come in. Um, but this month is exciting, right, Nicole? Because this is like a gathering of our friends for our favorite fall activities. It is like 60 degrees in Charlotte today. It's amazing. I don't know if you guys have real fall weather where you're from, but leave a comment and let us know. Um, Nicole, what is your favorite fall activity? Oh my gosh. I, I love everything about fall. I love cozy clothes. I love watching movies, drinking hot chocolate. I'm wearing a sweater today. I am never happier than when I'm wearing a sweater. It is my favorite thing in the world. But Maddie, I heard that you're doing something really fun this year. You are doing a fall bucket list, which is so fun. Can you tell us more about that? Okay. I have to be honest with you guys. I love summer. I love long days. I love hot days. I love water activities. And every year when fall comes around and the days get shorter and the weather gets colder, I get like a little bit sad. And so a few years ago, I started doing this thing where I create a list of fun and intentional activities. And I spend the entire fall season checking them off the list. Um, and so this year I have a fall bucket list. It has all kinds of things on it from getting a fall themed manicure to drinking hot apple cider on my front stoop. Yum. Um, it's really fun and I really enjoy it. Um, I actually think that we created my fall bucket list for you guys. It's going to be in the Proverbs 31 morning show Facebook group after this video. So go check it out um, and maybe leave a comment on what you would like to add to the list. Nicole, if you were making a fall bucket list, what would be on your list? Oh my gosh. All of these are so fun. I'm so excited. I want to do all of those, but I have never like baked a pie from scratch. And I think that would be such a fun fall thing to do. So I think I'm going to bake a pie, maybe pumpkin pie, maybe an apple pie. I don't know. I love it. Baking a pie. I have a feeling that some of our morning show friends have baked pies before. So maybe they can give you some tips in the comments on the best way to bake a pie, the best recipe, the best flavor. Mm -hmm. All yeah. the things we want yeah. to know. All the tips. Okay. Something else that is nice about fall, someone who loves summer, I actually do love this about fall. I love that fall is a natural reset, right? As the weather changes, yeah. maybe our hearts change. Um, we start being in more routines than we were in the summer. And I love the way that this just entices me. Um to just spend more intentional time with the Lord, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. That's so true. And we are actually doing a study that I'm so excited about in our first five app. We're studying the book of Joshua and the title is so good. It gets me every time. It's choosing obedience, even when you are afraid. How Whoa. good is that? Yeah, I know, right? I don't know about you guys, but I feel like some internal resistance towards that yeah. title because I don't want to do things afraid. I want to do things that I'm confident about. I want to do things that sound fun and, um, doing things afraid isn't really either of those things for me. Um, which is why I'm so excited because today we have a special guest coming on the morning show and we're going to talk a little bit about that, of how to obey what God is calling to you, calling you to do, even when you're afraid. And it's going to be really great. And I'm so glad you're here to join us. Yes, absolutely. And we hope that you will join us for that study. We'll put the link to it in the comments, but we're so excited just to study that together and just to learn a little bit more about 
how to be obedient, even when you are afraid. So we're so excited for that. And also, like Maddie mentioned, we do have a very special guest joining us today. We're so excited. But before we invite her on, take a look at this little video to get to know her a little bit better. Meredith Brock is the Executive Director of Strategy and Business Development at Proverbs 31 Ministries, as well as a literary agent and the publishing manager for Lisa Turkhurst. She has a passion for seeing the Word of God transform lives and loves equipping her teams and authors to strategically take the unique messages God has entrusted to them and reach the globe. Her unique background in the creative industry, exposure to the business world, and her master's degree in rehabilitation counseling has allowed her to challenge her teams to create innovative processes to make a big impact for the kingdom of God. Meredith lives in Charlotte, North Carolina, and is married to worship leader Mac, and is mom to two adorable kids, Harvey and Cyrus. We're so excited to hear from Meredith Brock. Meredith, welcome to the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. We are so excited that you're here. Hey, while the video was going, I was looking at some of our comments, and do you want to hear something so crazy? What? We have morning show um, friends all the way from Malaysia watching right now. Isn't that wow, crazy? Wow, that's amazing. Well, hey, Malaysian friends. <laughs> nice to be with you this morning. Um, uh, uh, Meredith, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at Proverbs 31 Ministries? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'll tell you my really fancy title. Uh, that is, it's really fancy and it's really long and it feels a little bit obnoxious to me. Um, but my title is Executive Director of Strategy and Business Development here at Proverbs 31. But what that really means is that I have the best job in the ministry, <laughs> which is I get to oversee our whole creative department. So all the designers, copywriters, um, email marketing implementers, all that kind of stuff, video producers, they all kind of sit underneath my leadership, as well as the development uh, side of the really organizational business of running a ministry. And so it's really fun. I feel really, really lucky to be able to do it. I have been with the ministry for 10 years. And let me tell you how I know that. And that is because my oldest son just turned 10 in August and I started this job when he was just a little newborn, y'all, I got his school picture today. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to be that mom. Oh. He's so cute. I he can hardly so stand it. He's so cute. So yes, I've been with the ministry 10 years and I love it. Wow. I love that, Meredith. Well, today we're talking about obeying God, even when you're afraid. And I'm curious for you, how often has obeying God been in a circumstance that you're afraid? <laughs> oh, this is a, this is a big topic, you guys. And it's a hard one. And like Maddie said, I think we all have a little bit of resistance to it because we're like, no, I want to do fun things <laughs> and I want to do things that make me happy and I feel confident in and um, but I think when we look at scripture and when we look at our own walks of faith, it's not always easy. And, it, and God often calls us into things that we might be a little bit afraid of. Um, for me, I feel like I became, I, be, I don't feel like I know I became a believer when I was 17. I didn't grow up in a Christian home and right out of the gate, the Lord asked me to do some pretty dramatic things to obey him and begin following after him with my whole life. One of those, this is very dramatic, but one of those was to leave my home. I grew up in Idaho, um, was to leave my family. I was 17, like I said, and go move in with a couple in Alaska. What? That's crazy. But what was even crazier is at the time, I had gotten a scholarship to Boise State University. I had worked super hard for that scholarship. I had this whole idea of what my life was going to look like. And God very clearly said, Meredith, you can do that. You can, I'm not gonna stop you, but I'm gonna give you the choice for a better path because I have something for you on the other side of this choice that you couldn't get to unless you said yes. And so I chose to go to give up my scholarship. 
I moved to Alaska and it completely changed the whole trajectory of my life. Now, fast forward again, a few years later, like quite a few years later, I met my husband, we got married, faced with another similar <laughs> choice was we had been married for about a year. He had gotten, he had worked really, really hard. He wanted to go into music supervision for movies <laughs> and we thought we were going to move to LA. And we were on the course to move to LA. He got a job offer in LA. And then along came um, a relationship that we didn't expect and an offer to move to Charlotte to be a worship leader. <laughs> and we were like, what? Well, of course, the logical decision here is to move to LA and chase after our dreams, right? Like this was the thing that God, like that we wanted, you know? But when we really leaned into the Lord and we prayed and we fasted together, we knew we needed to move to Charlotte. And y'all, I can tell you now, 15 years later, I am so glad we made that move to Charlotte. And I am so glad I made that move to Alaska. You know, now fast forward again, here we are again, my husband and I have been married 15 years. Uh, we have two biological kids. A few years ago, the Lord really put on our heart to step into the world of foster care. And we, it, we were very scared. We didn't know what it looked like. We did our research, but we chose to become foster parents. Um, and it has been one of the scariest steps of obedience we've ever made. But wow, I could sit here all day long and tell you about the things that the Lord has taught us and the depth of meaning that we have experienced in our family because of that choice. Now, those are all super big ones, right? Like life altering decisions towards obedience. I think there's also really small steps of obedience mm. that sometimes feel really, really scary or really uncomfortable. Like this morning, y'all, when my alarm clock went off at 545, <laughs> I did not want to get out of the bed. I did not want to get out of the bed. And, but I know if I can wake up at 545 before my kids do, I can get a few minutes in the word by myself mm. and I can set my heart towards Jesus and the kingdom before I set my heart towards the chaos of getting three children out the door. And that is just as much an act of obedience as making the decision to not stay in Idaho and move to Alaska. And so I think the biggest thing that one of the things that I have to hold on to when I'm faced with big or small acts of obedience, that on the other side of that act of obedience, God always has something for me that I couldn't get on this side of that act of obedience. Yeah. Something that I love that you said, Meredith, is in all these choices of obedience, um, they were things that you worked really hard for. And then God said, hey, hey, there's something better. And I think that's so hard when you work so hard and you have this idea of what your life is supposed to become. And then you get there and you're about to take the step and walk into what you've been working towards. And then God says, hey, this direction, this direction. Mm -hmm. Um, it's hard and it's scary and it's not what we want to do at all. Um, because sometimes doing what is right and doing what God is calling to you isn't easy mm. ever. <laughs> that is, uh, couldn't be more true, Maddie. I mean, seriously, there's always this moment, I think in our obedience that carries a certain level of tension, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, being obedient to what God is calling us to do is actually goes against all of our natural tendencies. Why? Because we want to be in charge of our lives. <laughs> we want to be the ones calling the shots, right? I mean, let's go right back to the Garden of Eden. That's where it all started. You guys imagine, just imagine for a moment, pause right now and imagine just for a second, if Adam and Eve would have been obedient instead of taking that piece of fruit. How different would our lives look right now? How different would their lives have looked? Dramatically different, right? And it, was all, it all came down to one act of obedience that they chose not to take. Now let's, let's flip it on its head one more time. Imagine what our lives would look like had Noah not obeyed God. Had he not built that ark, our lives would look totally different. Okay, here's another one. Moses. What if Moses would not have obeyed God and led the Israelites? I mean, 
wow, life would look so different. The apostle Paul, had he not obeyed God to spread the gospel? Wow, our lives would look so different. And I think the ultimate one, imagine, pause for a moment right now and think about what if Jesus had not obeyed his heavenly father and gone to the cross? Wow, our lives would look so different. You know, I think it's only natural in those moments when we feel the prompting of the Lord to do something that we're afraid of, um, to have like some natural barriers that run through our minds, right? Um, I always go to, I think it's very normal to be like, ooh, if I do that, what are people gonna think about me? You know, I was so afraid. I remember, I'll never forget when I made the choice to leave my family at 17 in Idaho and move to Alaska, I was like, oh my gosh, all my friends are gonna think I'm such a freak. I'm such a weirdo. She came, she came to know Jesus and turned into a real weirdo. She moved to Alaska. <laughs> and then, I mean, I remember thinking, gosh, this is going to be so hard too. I don't know anybody up there other than this couple. What if they're weird, you know, and I get in and, and this is going to hurt because all my friends, I'm going to lose them because I've made this decision. You know, all those Questions are so normal, you guys. Um, I remember there was another scenario while I was a, while I was a believer, dating a great guy. He was a great guy, loved Jesus, dated him for quite a while, and I thought for sure we were going to get married. He thought for sure we were going to get married, and then there was this moment where I became unsettled, and I knew there was quite a few markers. People in my life kind of pointed out some things. I spent some time in the Word, and the Lord clearly spoke to me that. I needed to break up with him because he had something else for me. And I so remember him saying, you can stay with him, Meredith, if you can. This is, it's not a sin for you to stay with him. But I have so much more for you if you will believe me when I say I have so much more for you. Will you do this? And I look back and I'm like, my goodness, I'm so glad I made that decision. And I'm sure he is too, <laughs> because the Lord had something for him on the other side of my obedience as well. Sometimes our obedience is for other people and not just ourselves. You know, I think I'm learning that through foster care. <laughs> my act of obedience to bring a baby into my home that I know nothing about other than he needs a family has been, yes, I've gotten great. I've learned so much and the Lord has shaped my heart so much, but it's not just for me, it's for him and his biological family too. Mm -hmm. um, there's always, and like, like I said earlier, there's always tension in obedience, a tension of holding our desires in one hand and being willing to ask God to fulfill those desires. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, but also, holding those desires and surrendering them to him at the same time. I want us to take a look at some a scripture. I would say this is the ultimate act of obedience. Okay. So go to Mark 14, 36. If you have your Bible, this verse takes place in the garden of Gethsemane and it is the ultimate act of obedience. Jesus knows what his father has asked him to do. And I want you to hear what he says as he's walking in the tension, you guys. Okay, verse 36, Mark 14, 36. It says, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you, period. He's saying, God, Dad, I know you can do anything. I know you can do anything. Next sent sentence, take this cup from me, period. He's saying, I don't. I, I wish there, is there another way? Do I have to do this? Do I, re, are you really, is this really the thing that you're asking me to do? Then next sentence, yet not what I will, but what you will. He's simultaneously holding his desire to not like, do I have to die? Is there another way? But Lord, not my will yours be done. And he goes through, he follows through with it. He does that thing that is scary and, and painful in order to be obedient to his father. 
And what does he get? He changes everything for us, right? Again, sometimes your act of obedience is for someone else. But you know what else? It was for him too, because he got his bride. He gets his bride now by his, his act of obedience. Now he gets his bride, which is his church, his children to come home to him. What a beautiful, beautiful thing, but it doesn't take away from the pain and the discomfort mm -hmm. of making the choice to be obedient. There's a, people joke about this all the time who come to my house for the first time. There's a banner in my front entryway um, that says comfort is a slow death, <laughs> which is kind of intense, y'all. Very I know. intense, very <laughs> intense, Meredith. <laughs> I tend to be, I have a little bit of an intense personality, um, but the reason I have it there uh, is for it to be a reminder to me mm -hmm. and to my family and to the people who come through the door that God will oftentimes ask us to do things that don't feel good. They don't feel good. They push us out of our comfort zone. But on the other side of that moment of comfort, that act of obedience is something so good for us. And naturally, we don't want to do hard things, guys. Let's all admit it. <laughs> naturally, we want to be comfortable, but getting uncomfortable creates growth. It'll grow intimacy with the Father. It will increase your level of trust in Him and ultimately... It will increase your maturity as a believer the more you step into those moments of obedience. And I think oftentimes we think, like if I zoom, if I rewind my mind and my emotions and my thoughts back to that moment when I knew the Lord was asking me to break up with my boyfriend, mm -hmm. in my mind, I was like, no. <laughs> I don't want to break up with him. I really like him. It, our life is going to be so great together. This is what I want. But then I realized what I really want, what I really, really want is joy, yeah. peace, patience, kindness, love. And what are those things, you guys? Nicole, what did I just name off? The fruits of the spirit. And that's what we really yeah. want in our lives, you guys. Mm -hmm. That's what we really, really want. And obedience cultivates a place in your heart for the Holy Spirit to grow those fruits of the Spirit in you. Wow, that's so good, Meredith. I feel like I have so much that I'm taking with me from that. And I love the way that you said that and just how you said, like, there's so much on the other side of obedience. You know, we get to know God more deeply, more intimately, trust him more. And I just think that that is such, that's so good. And I'd love to know what have you learned about God as you have been obedient to him, despite being afraid? Oh, what I think one of the biggest things I've learned when I look back on it and y'all, I don't want to paint the picture that I do this perfectly. I, cause I don't, there's nowhere close to it. There are big moments that I can look back and go, wow, I'm really glad that I was obedient there. And then there are moments that I can look back and I kind of cringe a little bit. And I realize, man, I was not as obedient as I was halfway obedient there, or I just went the other direction, you know, but the thing that I have learned time and time again, is that when I am obedient, it has always been worth it. Every time I don't regret one time that I was obedient. I regret lots of times that I was half obedient. I can see it. I can trace the line, you know, it doesn't. And I've, I've said this so many times and I hate, I feel like I'm kind of, be, is, what do they say? Beating a dead horse. I don't, kicking a dead horse. There's some kind of saying like that, but it just, it, obedience doesn't always feel good mm -hmm. because you feel like you've been misunderstood and misrepresented and that, you know, oftentimes my feelings have been hurt in the midst of being obedient. But if I can, if I can work through all of those emotions, I'm, it's always worth it on the other side. There's another passage. There's another character in scripture that I think does this so well. And there's this monumental moment for him that I have actually gone back and studied quite a few times as I've been faced with hard decisions. Um, and it's David. So let's, you can go back to 
1 Samuel chapter 24, and I'll, I'll kind of tell you what's happening. So there's this, there's this guy named David who God has given him a promise that he's going to be king one day. Like he's been told, you're going to be king one day. But there's a problem. There's another dude who's on the throne. His name is Saul. <laughs> and Saul knows that David is supposed to be king one day. And so he's super threatened by him. Like, he's like, oh gosh, he's going to take over. And then what about me? You know, so Saul is like very worried about this David guy. And so what does he do naturally? The king who has all the armies and all the things, he's going to take care of his problem, right? He's going to go out, find him and kill him. <laughs> so he can't take his throne, you know? So he's like, then I can be king forever. My family line will be in, in ruling forever. I don't have to worry about this guy. So David hears of this and he's out running from Saul. He's in the desert running away from Saul, there's this contingency of men that believe in David that are like, we know he's going to be king one day. And so they're out in the desert with him too. So think, picture it, David, small army of guys all kind of hiding in the desert from big, scary King Saul, who's trying to, who's trying to kill David and his men. And there's this magic moment that happens in chapter 24 of first Samuel. And what happens is David has run into a cave with all of his men and he's hiding. He's hiding from Saul. And y'all, guess who comes into the cave? But Saul himself, which is wild. And he's got to go to the bathroom. That's weird, but it's true. We all have to go to the bathroom sometimes. <laughs> so Saul comes into the cave. He's going to the bathroom. And this is the moment. It's magic, right? God has delivered Saul into David's hands and his men who have been running from this guy who's been trying to kill them are like, David, brother, this is your moment. Go kill him, right? Okay, so let me read some verses, okay? Chapter 24, we're gonna go to verse four. It says, the men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Interesting choice. We all thought he was going to kill him, right? That's weird. Verse five, afterward, David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord with these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. And y'all, here's the verses that, the kicker, the one that, the verses that blow my mind. Then David went out of the cave. I want you to think about it. He's walking out of the cave. Behind him are all the soldiers that are going, what have you just done? You, you idiot. That was our moment. You should have killed him. Why didn't you kill him? And in front of him is what? A king and an army of men who have been waiting to kill him. So behind him, absolute disappointment. People who are so disappointed in the choice that he made. In front of him, a whole bunch of angry men who want to kill him. And what does he do? Verse eight, then David went out of the cave, called out to Saul, my Lord, the king, when Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you this day? You have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord, because he is the Lord's anointed. God had told David, you will be king one day. I will put you on the throne. Don't take it for yourself. I will put you there. And his, he, and for, because he was so set on being obedient to what God had called him to do, he was willing to have death literally in front of him. When you're bowed down on your knees, you guys, how easy would it have been? to kill him. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to protect himself. He wasn't, he wasn't trying to defend himself in front of the men behind him. You know what he was trying to do? Live in full obedience to God, mm. not, 
man. Meredith, that is so good. It's also just such a great story in the Bible. Like that's so crazy. That's in the Bible. You guys, if you ever tell me the Bible is boring, I'm going to send you to Samuel. Okay. (laughs) Um, you know what? I think that there's so many things that you've talked about that have resonated. I'm reading the comments as they come in. Um, and you've just talked so much about what you've learned about God through obedience, but also what have you learned about yourself through just Mm -hmm. this process of being obedient? Uh, that I'm a resistant to obedient. I don't want to do it. (laughs) I think that's what I've learned. And I think when I look at, um, when in those moments, when I resist obedience, which I, we all do, you guys, it's so natural. It's so normal. God's not disappointed in you when you resist it and you're, and you're like, I don't want to do this. It's what you do with those emotions that matter. It's what you do with those thoughts that matter. And oftentimes in those moments for me, when I am resisting obedience or questioning, like, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I like to go. Obedience can oftentimes feel like a trial. Like God is, it can feel like suffering. And when you're stepping into a, you know, David in that moment, I bet you that didn't feel good. Y'all that was, that felt like a trial. Like, do I go out there and bow down God? Or do I stay right here in the comfort of this cave? You know, I like to look to James chapter one, it's verses two through four. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials, trials, the option to be obedient of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete. And here's the part that I really love, not lacking anything. Y'all, I don't want to lack anything. I want to be mature and complete and obedience, even when we're afraid, is a channel directly to that. That is good. You guys, I want to see some hearts. Give Meredith some hearts for how just great that was. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah, absolutely. And Meredith, you know, that was so good. And I just think about the girl watching this who finds herself in that place right now. God is asking her to obey and do something really scary. And that might feel like a little bit too much. Would you share some advice maybe for that girl in that who finds herself in that situation right now? Absolutely. Uh, y'all there's three things. If you're in one of these seasons right now, there's three things that I want you to do. Okay. The first is, and it comes directly from scripture. You need to stay connected to the vine right? There's that scripture in the New Testament that says that. What does, what does that even mean? Well, that means you need to get in the word of God and you need to pray and you need to ask him. He promises if you ask for wisdom, he'll give it to you. And so ask him for the wisdom to discern what that step of obedience is. Okay. He's not, I love to tell people, a mentor of mine told me a long, long time ago, uh, God is a better leader than you are a follower. (laughs) So lean into him, lean into him and say, Lord, lead me. I want to do what you want me to do. So first stay connected to the vine. The second y'all, you need other people. Like you really, really need other people. When I was making those key uh, decisions in my life, I had people speaking into me and saying, Meredith, this is, this is wisdom. And this is not wisdom. You know, I think you need to, seek out individual wise people to, to talk with you, to mentor, to, for you to pour your heart out to. But also I really want to encourage you get in, get in a group of people as well. Surround yourself. That's really the third thing is surround yourself with people that will encourage your obedience and perseverance. Um, I think we're actually, um, which is funny because I'm in a season right now where the Lord is, is, leading me down to a road of trying to make some hard decisions and asking me to make a step of obedience in some areas. And I'm really excited that we're about to jump into a study in our first five um, mobile app and community all about this. Um, It is the study of Joshua, which what that book of the Bible y'all is fire. It's one of my favorite books of the Bible, it's stories upon stories that you can learn from. But here's the thing that I love about it is that this is the, this is the subtitle of that study is choosing obedience, even when you are afraid. So if you're in one of those seasons right now, like Nicole just said, y'all 
get in the app, get around people, study God's word, pray, lean in. He will lead you through that step of obedience to find what he has on the other side for you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Meredith. We're going to be sharing in the comments a link to download the First Five mobile app. You guys, this app is completely free, which is amazing. Every day you'll wake up and you'll have reading and a teaching, and it'll guide you through the whole book of Joshua. Um, you can get in groups. You could start one with your friends. You can meet people on the app and you don't have to read it alone. It's a really amazing um, resource that we love to provide for you. So check out the first five mobile app free in your app store. Um, Meredith, thank you so much for coming on the show mm -hmm. and sharing so much wisdom. I have been reading the comments this whole time. I can't wait for you to go back and read the comments because I think you're going to be really encouraged by just how much of a blessing and encouragement you were today. So thank you for being here. Of course. I'm y'all are so kind for having me. Really. I'm <laughs> glad to be here. Well, Meredith, just to close this out, would you be willing to pray for those who find who are needing to be obedient to God right now? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'd love to Lord Jesus. Um, we pause right now in whatever it is that we're doing, listening to this in Facebook live, listening to whatever we might be doing in the midst of our day. And Lord, we say, we choose you. We choose your way and not our way. We want to mimic that prayer of Jesus in the garden and say, Abba, Father, Dad, we know you are capable of anything but your will be done, not all. Give us the strength and the courage to step out in faith and obedience, even in the face of fear, because we love you, Lord, and we want to know you more and be more like your son, Jesus. We pray that you would bless the people listening to this, Lord. Give them the courage that they need to take that next step of obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> We also just want to remind you guys that if you want to remember who you are, um, we have a great uh, resource on our bookstore. It's this known cuff. It's this really pretty gold cuff with the word known right in the middle. It comes from Psalm 139.1, which says, you have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. I can't think of a better reminder of why we should be obedient than understanding that God knows us so intimately and wearing it on your wrist. If you guys want to check that out, we're going to link it in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you next time on the Proverbs 31 morning show. Bye everyone.